Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about direct to mobile broadcasting or D2M. So let's dive right into it. Now, what exactly is the problem that we have to build something direct to mobile? Well, problem is TV medium is dying and uh, mobile at this point in time is the dominant mode of broadcast consumption, meaning many people even watch their sports match, their news on their phone meaning mobile phone if you have anybody has control over your mobile phone they control what you consume so it is something very serious and not to mention it's not just a thing in india it's worldwide problem be it japan be it australia be it usa everybody is dealing with it and one thing you have to understand even though tv networks they will give you big numbers as in like you know we watch like you know this sports event was watched by like five million viewers and all that jazz you're like damn that's good here's the problem with that uh, that would be very low compared to how it should be. And when you have low views, even though you will be talking in millions of you, your profit margin will go down. And if your profit margin goes down beyond a certain point, you have to simply shut down. So even though you may be hearing big numbers, as like, you know, uh, 10 million, 20 million, it's like if the channel was designed to work in an ecosystem where it is at least, like the worst day would have been 30 million, then it will be creating the infrastructure, the manpower, everything that is needed to run this puppy will consume that kind of uh, cash flow. If the cash flow shrinks, they cannot just downsize a channel you cannot downsize the channel you simply have to shut it down downsizing a channel is generally a really bad thing so low views low profit equal shut down and nations from a national point of view every nation wants some way of public broadcasting to exist for prosperity it's not something that's just for like you know control or propaganda it does have some genuine benefit and every nation that worked their ass off to have some uh, good broadcast have gotten good results out of it so it is something that everybody truly desires and it has good things for public also so what is this idea of D2M? D2M is very simple. We, all of us, all of us is having our phone 24 into 7 with us. I'm reasonably sure many of you are watching this thing on your mobile phone. So the idea is broadcast to the smartphone directly. Uh, India literally kind of skipped a lot of technological generation. We went from analog TV to analog TV to analog TV directly, directly satellite to home. So India kind of skipped a lot of digital terrestrial uh, system, uh, but there are, there are some advantage of having terrestrial broadcasting, not relying on satellite itself, simply because there are many things that could happen to satellite. So having uh, basically terrestrial broadcast for your mobile phone will work awesome. If you can do it properly, you will have a scenario where you are not using internet packs. Many time you have, uh, you know, your mobile phone, it is connected to the mobile tower, but you have consumed, let's say your 2 GB of data per day. Now you're like, lol, it's 100% useless. So that will not happen if it's broadcasting because it's receiving. It's one way you do not have to worry about any data packs and all that jazz. It will work on top of that because uh, spectrum, the more number of users you have, the harder time mobile phones uh, tower will have to deal with it. But imagine if the majority of data consumption is happening on some other spectrum, then it's, uh, it's, you know, lower congestion. So you do not have to worry about that also, meaning your 4G customers or 5G customers, they will not have to worry about it. And it will be independent pipeline for stability. That's why, unless you have extremely bad weather, uh, as in like in terms of uh, your satellite or TV receivers, you do not ever worry about buffering. You do not worry about glitching. You just like, it just works. Unless something is broken, you do not have to worry about or some extreme weather events. So this is uh, one scenario that people will get no drops, no buffering, no congestion because it's like a dedicated pipe, just one way, not two way. But again, there may be some return channel. That channel would be very slim, very basic level information, just like authentic authentication code would be sent through that. So that's the idea of it. Broadcasting to the mobile phone. So government and whoever wants to utilize this has a way to reach audience. So what about the tech? Now tech side is, uh, be mindful, I'm giving you a very early draft of system. Even though I have directly taken data from Indian government's announcement itself, it's not finalized. It could change. But at this point in time, they are targeting 526 megahertz to 582 megahertz band to be reserved for D2M, meaning nobody else will broadcast anything. Like if you have worked with satellite uh, receiving, which I did uh, basically getting image out of satellite weather station, you will know they generally transmit around 130 megahertz. If you are familiar with FM, you know for a fact they start around 95 to 107 megahertz. So this is uh, in that megahertz range, it's not gigahertz. And uh, how wide is the channel? Channel is supposed to be 50 megahertz wide. Now be mindful, uh, they could slice this channel up into multiple streams or they could have one giant stream. That's up to them. Now, is that enough? That's the reality. Like we are familiar with gigahertz. Even our computers work on gigahertz. Your mobile processor works on gigahertz. Your Wi-Fi works in gigahertz. Is megahertz enough for, let's say, a quality video stream? Short answer, absolutely. Why? Well, you have to just switch your perspective. Come to normal Wi-Fi that we are used to 
all of our Wi-Fi have like, you know, 12 channels. Now here's the deal. When we say 2.5 gigahertz, does not mean zero to 2.5 gigahertz. That's not the point. 2.5 gigahertz simply means in this zone, meaning you have electromagnetic spectrum, 2.5 gigahertz. 5 gigahertz, uh, 100 megahertz. That's the whole point of it. It's just to, when you say 2.5 gigahertz, it simply means where in the spectrum. Now, how wide that uh, channel is, that is generally, even in our normal Wi Fi, it's 22 megahertz. Now, if you go to, let's say, 5.5 uh, uh, gigahertz, then you can get something a bit more more oomphish where you can have channels that are like 20 megahertz for legacy support it could be 40 megahertz for double data rate 80 megahertz and 160 backhaul uh, data lux so again most of us if you have good wi-fi experience you know for a fact that wi-fi can easily support 50 mbps without any issue so uh, 22 megahertz is more than enough if even if they divide the system with three channels like let's say they have three concurrent stream running this still would be more than good enough for quality video stream now, why do go to lo such a low frequency? Well, lower frequency equals longer range, meaning 5G, uh, 5G is a good joke simply because how many of you have 4G and have actually received 100 megabits per second on your mobile phone reliably? That's supposed to be the speed of 4G. Now you may be like, okay, that's paper speed. How about real world? How about many of you have even received reliably, meaning you pull out your phone, it works at 30 Mbps without any issue many of you have never experienced that and same thing will happen in 5g day one it will be like you know on this mobile network in this system is awesome the moment it rains it's like lol and the moment more people switch to it lol so that's the one of the scenario the higher the frequency the lower range and you have experienced this in your own home when you had 2.5 gigahertz uh, transmitter you, you can go, transmit to much longer range when you had 5 gigahertz even though speed is faster it does not go very far so having uh, 500 megahertz allows them to transmit much longer range now, that's awesome, but there's a consequence. Your antenna size would be huge, meaning uh, antennas are generally made in completes or halves, meaning you will have antenna that is completely one length, half of that wavelength, quarter of that wavelength, one eighth of the, like, that's how it has to go. Uh, so generally, if you want to have uh, basically good reception, you want full length, very expensive, very cumbersome. So generally you go half. And when I was making NOAA receiver there, if I'm not mistaken, it's like quarter wavelength or something like that. You get the point, like there is a, like a mathematical relationship to it. So if you want lower uh, frequency, yes, awesome. Everything is awesome, but your dish size, your uh, antenna size goes exponentially higher. Or you have some technology that allows you to uh, clean the signal, basically what we call low noise amplifiers, uh, you know, if you have very high quality one, then it can work even on small antennas. And you can see that like these are the prototypes they were showing very early product. This is integrated device, meaning somebody designed it properly from day one. And then you have other devices that has antennas simply because that uh, 500 megahertz does require, you know, large antennas compared to 2.5 gigahertz. Be mindful. Compared to 100, it's small. Uh, the higher the frequency, the smaller the antenna gets. So it does require new receiver in your mobile phone. Your mobile phone is inherently not designed to work with this sort of spectrum. And it does not have the decoding chip and all the algorithms uh, that it needs to decode it. So it's basically it's gonna need a software defined radio that works in this spectrum. And it may become a dongle that you can add on simply because uh, if India is doing the launch starting and there is no Indian manufacturer, uh, you, we may have a scenario where at the first few years, it will be just a dongle that you buy and attach it to your phones. So like a dongle like this with USB-C because again, uh, the, even the maximum bandwidth won't be too high that a USB-C 2.0 can't transmit it. It's like 20, 30 Mbps. That's more than good enough. So what's the logic behind it? Logic is very simple. It's supposed to be a very good consumer experience for, uh, uh, you know, day-to-day -day use case because it's a fixed cost system, meaning what con uh, government is aiming for is like monthly charge, that's it. Right now we are getting double trolled by our internet service provider because many service providers, like I have fiber to home, so I have 300 Mbps connection and they're like, you know, you get free TV and all that jazz. Here's the, uh, after some recent competition, thankfully now we have 3.2 terabytes of data uses. But before that it was like, you know, 100 uh, gigabytes, 200 gigabytes. That is so low that if one of uh, one or two of my family members started to consume, let's say one is watching uh, TV shows, another is watching live cricket match, we'll go through that data and then unlimited means nothing. So that will not be an issue. So your FUP will not be an issue that you have to worry about. It will simply work. You just pay it for it, it works as long as you have the hardware, exactly like TV. That's why it's a broadcasting system. And you will not have to worry about buffering and things of that nature. Now, it will be amazing for live events, sports, and news sort of scenarios, simply because these things are 24 into seven. There is always some sports happening somewhere at 24 into seven. So you do not have to worry about it. And why waste precious bandwidth from 4G network or 5G network for something that you can just get on a pipeline, fixed pipeline, and that is working flawlessly. You do not have to worry too much about it. Events, uh, government celebrations, and things of that. There are things that uh, it would be wise to get 
you know, direct live feed to public. Then you also have to understand it will free up your data packs. You don't have to worry about it. And data pack will be reserved for two years. Meaning if all you do is watch, let's say, some music videos. And like, again, you do your main work. Mobile is just a data consumption for your entertainment. You just have like, you know, headphones and all that. Again, use this system. Don't have to worry about anything else. Don't have to worry about data caps. And then the data cap that you do have, that 2 GB data cap that you have generally most people per day, you can use it for something more important like video calls. Other OTT platform can also jump uh, into this and using this, meaning Netflix can utilize the system as a delivery pipeline, meaning they will have their uh, main backbone as like for login, uh, everything else they need to do, serial number, login and all that authentication. And then they're like, hey, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, tune into this channel and you will get what you want. That's it. So that can also be done. So, and if uh, localized content is there, then it will be super easy to broadcast also. And it should allow rural area reach simply because the frequency is so low that it should uh, allow only few towers to cover a very large area. That's the prime benefit of it. It won't have that issue of like 5G where it's like, you know, every other building has to have that transmitter, otherwise it's useless. It won't have that. And it will save broadcasting from algorithms. Right now, the biggest threat to our world is algorithms, simply because you couldn't have a very important uh, news announcement and government could do their best they can be like go to facebook they can go to instagram they can go to youtube they can do everything that they can and make sure the public can get that data but algorithm is like even if i'm not saying malicious i'm just saying algorithm may be like you know what i don't feel like it this data will not be shown to the public lol so that's a serious issue and uh, during covid uh, indian government realized this the hard way even though you may think oh india is a backwards country not really and uh, even though government was like putting all their might uh, into making sure that people get the news get the information uh, only few crore people were getting it and you may be like is few crore good not really we have 150 crore kind of people so few 150 supposed to be there so reality is tv channel is dying so broadcast industry has to switch it's a large sector of uh, public so if that many people get uh, you know jobless that's a big issue so that's the logic behind it what we can expect in the future well uh, government should uh, you know get reach to the public that's what government wants government wants a direct reach to the public without the filtering of the third party that's the main issue here meaning government does not want to be like you know what algorithm youtube algorithm or google itself may be like you know what i don't like this government which uh, you know that was a very big issue with uh, donald trump simply because he was flat out uh, showing people it's like you know i said this and this part is cut out and you are only seeing the video that uh, like you know yelling the bad part not the good part because again any person is has like good and the bad if you only show the bad parts so much uh, like you know uh, Effort was focused on like you know just the bad part it was like, like it's looping it and uh, you know circulating in the algorithms that is like people may think oh this guy is dumb dumb it's like dude you ran for presidency and you won fundamentally speaking you have more than good enough intelligence to do that <laughs> it's like so that was one of the things there was a third party control over the government that's not acceptable like you do not want to be in a position where China does something and China has a talks with Google it's like bro we're gonna do something and Google all you have to do is suppress that news so and people are not watching television if we do not have this sort of influence people will simply be oblivious to what's happening so that's one of the scenario where you do not want that third party control over the public media perception so that's a serious issue you do not want the control and you do not want the filtering because filtering itself could be bad because you know, we just want to filter it no 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 you can twist the narrative in surprisingly horrifying way just by clipping things it's like lol i'm only going to show you this clip not the things that preceded it just this clip that that's dangerous so it will allow uh, Indian public to get its own Indian ecosystem. Right now, most of the things that India consumes is uh, foreign made. Uh, even the patentry and most of the profit that is being generated in India goes abroad. So having something that is from day one designed for India, built for India, uh, would be a really good economical advantage also. And it should be profitable for government and public offices at the same time. Meaning we should get better experience, government should get some revenue. Now you're like, why the heck government wants revenue? Because government runs a lot of, uh, you know, TV channels, if they are not being watched, advertisers will pull their money. Now you're like, okay, shouldn't government do it? Yes, deal, government can do it, but they will increase your taxes. So that's why like, they have to be done on a very fixed budget. It's like, bro, this is a fixed budget. And if they, uh, if they are not getting any revenue, they will be like, first start to cut off channels. And then at the end of the day, they have to increase taxes because by law, by some constitution, they have uh, this sort of system where they have to make a you know, communication link. And what's the point of government having a communication link if nobody's using it? So that's a very serious issue. And uh, what government is hoping, I have provided the video down below, it is in English. Uh, 
it is a very interesting approach this time the government agency that is working on it they are very aware of things that indian people are like you know we will solve it ourselves that's not how it works that's never how it works like the whole reason linux is such a big, big backbone of our entirety of infrastructure is simply because it's open source they learned it the hard way like you have to have other people learning. like you cannot have uh, you know few bright minds and taking care of everything life does not work that way so you have to collaborate with it and they are trying to collaborate with whole asia of uh, pacific region meaning uh, they are trying to collaborate with japan we Vietnam, every country that is willing to work with it. So they want to, like, you know, India is the largest democracy in this planet. So we will be the bulk tester and then we're going to export this technology to everyone else and they can import their, uh, basically, they can export their ideas and, like, you know, better systems and all that jazz. So we, everybody wins at this point in time. And new players should get into the game because right now it's kind of scary how few channels actually exist. Meaning, if you're like, oh, there is 700 channels, here's the deal. Zoom out, see how many people own that channel and you would be shocked. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, that's it. That's it. Only A, B, C, done. Entirety of humanity's channels are controlled by A, B, C. You're like, what the hell? So that's the scary part. So that's why you want some uh, fertile ground where new players can come in, lay down their footwork and grow and shake up the industry. That is ne needed. Over time and time again, you need to have this. But there is a uh, honest reality of it. It could also fail simply because from a government's point of view, uh, from a public point of view, they are like, dude, you are just creating Doodarshan. Doodarshan was India's main national network because again, India did uh, got its independence kind of recently and uh, uh, electricity even re more recently. So from a practical point of view, my childhood, uh, you know, spent on this, Doodarshan. But many people don't know this. And because I specified, India jumps through technology. Basically, we went from barely having mobile phone to directly going 4G. Like literally, we got 4G surprisingly quickly and surprisingly robust infrastructure with so many competition. It's like, it's creepy how quickly India jumps through technology. So we could literally have a scenario where people may not be interested. Even if government is trying to do a good thing, people may be like, dude, it's almost like how you have governmental uh, Facebook groups and the moment you get requests from them, it's like, how about I block you? How about I don't watch you? In YouTube, you can do the same thing. It's like, you know, never show me this again. Do not recommend this. So. There, there is a certain risk where government can simply like, you know, try their best, but public can be like, you know what, not interested, no thanks. So because day one, there will not be that many public, uh, private partnerships. Uh, government have to take the brunt load. And I'm genuinely scared simply because uh, India did one thing, uh, UPI, and it became very successful. Now, it became successful through brute force because India did note ban, meaning they banned the bank notes. And that's brutal. But they had like, hey, we are doing this ban hammer thing and we have this tool to save you. So people use that tool. Now, here's the problem. If government is trying to create something like this and it starts to fail, what if government simply goes like, you know, I'm going to ban YouTube. I'm going to ban OTP. I'm going to ban Amazon Prime. And like government can do that. And be mindful, this is the same thing USSR did. And I'm generally kind of scared because I'm seeing some tendencies so to say where government is like what if we use the ban hammer i'm like dude that's, that's that's there is a reason we should not supposed to use ban hammer unless absolutely necessary not something is like dude we tried a system it did not work let's brute force it it does not work well out like in long term it never works out in short term you will like yeah in long term it's like dude no so let's see what happens in the future i do want it to succeed but it's like i genuinely want government to let it grow rather than like you know brute force it so this was my presentation on direct to mobile. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.